Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about five tips for street photography. <laughs> okay everyone, again, welcome back to the channel. My name is David Tula. Today we are talking about five tips for street photography. And my first tip is going to be to choose a prime lens. And what is a prime lens? It's a lens that does not zoom. And then obviously, a zoom lens is a lens that zooms. <laughs> so choose a prime lens. Um, today I'm shooting the 18 millimeter 1.4, which on a full frame camera, that's equivalent to 28 millimeters. I believe that prime lenses are great for beginners. Um, it allows you to see the same focal length repeatedly over and over. And yeah, you can focus really on taking pictures instead of zooming in and out all the time and changing your focal length. So for me, when I first started shooting, I shot primarily with a 35 millimeter. And I shot 35 millimeter for about, honestly, like five years to the point now where I can't shoot 35 millimeter anymore because I will lose my mind. And plus, I think the focal length is very boring. No offense to everybody <laughs> who shoots 35 millimeters or uses the X100V. My suggestion for shooting a prime lens is that you at least shoot the same lens for at least a month. Determine if you like the lens or not, um, if it's for you. If you don't, then you can always just switch lenses, but be careful with that because changing prime lenses mean you will be uh, spending more money. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe you can buy a cheap zoom lens and then just use that and then figure out what focal length you like with a zoom lens and then uh, switch to a prime lens. Okay, numero dos. Street photography tip number two is to know your camera settings in and out. And the reason why you wanna know your camera uh, in and out is because when you're taking pictures out in street photography, we all know that things, things move very fast. So the last thing you wanna do is to be filling with your camera and potentially be missing shots. So with that being said, knowing your camera inside and out, knowing the menu settings, so if you do need to change something, you can do it fast. Um, but most importantly, I would say is to know what shooting style works for you. And by that, I mean mostly how you're gonna uh, expose for your shots. So for me, I shoot manual, which means I adjust my aperture, my shutter speed, and my ISO uh, all on the fly while I'm, while I'm taking my photos. Some people shoot aperture priority, some people shoot automatic. It doesn't really matter what your style is, but just make sure you feel comfortable with that style and that you can expose for your shots, you know, fast, of course. Tip number three, holding the camera. <laughs> All right, so it's raining, so we had to come up here to shoot this part of the video. Originally, we were gonna do this outside in a more, what do you call, field format, but it's been raining since we got here, so we're working what we got. This camera can flip out, so if I wanna take pictures here, I can from the hip. This is one really good way to shoot street photography. Um, if you have one of those flippy screens, I don't really like those for street photography because you can get caught on something, uh, it can break easily. But yeah, also everybody can see that it's flipped out and you're doing something weird. So I like this one. You can have it behind your body. And this is also good because you don't have to worry about making eye contact with people, you know? So you can just look down and take photos all day. 
Hold on. Here, can you get a shot of this? Get a shot of this. So for me, when I flip my screen, oh, now it wants to work on camera. Wow. Okay, there we go. No matter how far away I am, it's still staying upside down. So I actually can't shoot like that anymore. It's weird how it works sometimes. But anyways, this works great if you're shy. That's method number one. Method number two I like to use, and I usually don't shoot with this when it's getting serious, so we're pretending it's serious. I like to have a small camera set up, as small as possible. Put this here. So it's a combination of things. It's like me shooting like this and actually kind of looking at the screen a little bit, but then I also shoot here, but then I'll pretend I don't know what's going on. And I'm just like snapping photos. The thing about shooting low is that you're gonna get that from under the nose type of composition, which I'm really not a fan of anymore. So these days I usually shoot a little bit more like this and again, pretend like I don't know what's going on and I will demonstrate it here. Let me get the light. Okay, walking down the street. Bam. And I just took those photos. All right, so let me do the other way. Uh, a lot of times I also hold the camera here. So I have it down and when I'm ready to take the photo, and just keep walking by. So when I first started shooting street photography, a lot of my photos were taken more like this. Uh, I would use the barrel of the lens, kind of like as a guideline. I would point like this, not even looking at the screen, which is cool, but it's not, I, didn't, I don't find it really necessary to do that, especially if you're just walking fast. Um, I usually just snap and go, like I said. But these days, I like to actually find moments um, make my presence be known a little bit more. Uh, I think when I started, I was always trying to be sneaky, not trying to be noticed, but now I don't mind people seeing that I have a camera. I'll sit there and ask more, I'll talk more. Um, it's a little more difficult here in South America with the language barrier, but I still try to speak Spanish and all that, but uh, I'll, I'll throw a few images of what I mean by that. Uh, I like to completely introduce myself and yeah, take my time, compose images, and I guess you can kind of call it fine art documentary photography. I'm not sure if that's a thing, but yeah. All right, so one last thing that I forgot to touch on is thumb position on the camera. When you're here and you have your thumb on the shutter button, it's not really a common uh, finger position like for example if somebody is looking at me take a photo most people are used to seeing a photo being taken like this right so if you're shy if you're a little bit new to street photography definitely recommend using the thumb the thumb technique and you can shoot from the hip again here here this gets a little weird looking so I won't advise this I think that's enough about how to hold a camera I'm gonna grab some food and see you in a little bit. Much needed break. Too much talking today. It's very important to replenish your energy. Mmm. All right, so if you don't know, I'm extremely addicted to pan, and especially when it's super sweet. So we had this one yesterday, we're gonna get, uh, it's like a banana bread covered with chocolate. I'm gonna close this. Hello, buenas tardes. Para mi? Si, por favor. This is what you call a slice of heaven right here. Mmm. It's my rico.
Next tip, if you really want to be a good street photographer, you have to drink coffee. Now you might be asking yourself, <laughs> why do I need coffee? Trust me on this one, you do. Coffee will make you more alert out there on the streets and your pictures will just come out better. So do what I do and drink coffee. <laughs> it's all about the phone. All right, real log, blog live status now. So when I used to live in Italy, we used to, uh, I got told to put the, the sugar on top of the foam and then you eat the foam with the spoon. So just in case you guys haven't tried it, I highly recommend you try it because it's a perfect way to judge how good a cappuccino is, is by tasting the foam. This is when you need a flippy screen, it's perfect. You can see the camera. I'm gonna put a thing up that says the camera lady, the camera woman. The subtitles. The subtitles. Captain? I appreciate you. Okay, so we just left the coffee shop. It's still raining. It's been raining for about three hours now. Um, I wanted to do some shooting here. Usually a lot of people here. Uh, we'll see what happens. But anyways, tip number 4.2 for my five tips of street photography is to not stand out. So don't look like a tourist, especially in a for foreign country. So that's why this is uh, tip 4.2 and not a solid five. Because I know uh, in a lot of places like, for example, in the States or Europe, you really might not care about how you dress, but definitely in Latin America, foreign countries, it's a little bit better to blend in a little bit more. You're able to not disturb a scene and get a little bit more organic photos. No, habla español. No habla español. Y I'm making a haciendo una video. <laughs> okay. Lastly, tip 4.2. Like I said, blend in. Don't look like me uh, wearing shorts and tattoos. But the least I can do is I cover up my hair because it's a little crazy outside of this hat. We don't want to see that. So, blend in. All right, so tip number five. Show up to a location and shoot without expectations. You don't wanna show up somewhere and be disappointed about your image or if you had expectations for a certain kind of image. So just show up, have fun, take your time, stay calm. Uh, realize that you can't be everywhere at once. You know, just relax, have a good time. And uh, with that being said, that leads me to my next tip for tips for street photographers. And that is to shoot in all weather conditions. <laughs> because when you shoot in all weather conditions, uh, you can get images that you might not have in your portfolio, right? <laughs> for example, I haven't really shot in the rain myself, so this is good for me. Um, most of my images are at nighttime, metros, what else? Daytime, beach images. But now since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and walk around and shoot in the rain. Officially, my first time. You know, raining this hard with a non-waterproof camera or non-weather resistant camera. But really quick though, before I get started. Um, when I first started photography, put my camera off. When I first started photography, I would only shoot in cloudy conditions because I was scared of shooting in harsh lighting. And what happened with that was, uh, I basically would turn down shoots or refuse to do shoots, you know, things like that. Or say I couldn't shoot because my color 
needs to be in this, lighting, and et cetera, et cetera. So essentially, what that did was it limited my growth for shooting only in cloudy conditions. Um, so yeah, definitely shoot in all lighting conditions. It will help you, lighting and weather conditions, it will definitely help you advance as a photographer, uh, grow, be more versatile for sure. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start taking pictures and uh, see you guys here in a second. We're gonna figure this game plan out. Hello. Hola. The rain is serious out here. like soaking wet right now. <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to wait for it to die down, but it's not going to happen. The rain is serious out here. Camera is soaking wet. So I think my focus is going slower than usual. Now it's going faster. Hopefully we're good. Oh, put on. So as you can see, I'm kind of looking away. walking fast. I'll take pictures even when I'm not looking in the direction of the photo. And that really keeps people unsure if I'm taking their image or not. I think we should go back the other way. Go ahead and cut it. Cut it. Wow, so wet right now.
Shelter. I think that might be good for a little bit. I think that might be good. <laughs> I'm tired of getting wet. Alrighty, so pretty much getting rained out here. It doesn't seem like it's gonna stop. Um, but my last and final tip was, I think it's number seven, is that it's all about energy. So the energy that you put out is gonna be the energy you receive back in your photos. Um, for example, if I show up to a location and I'm happy, I'm smiling, I'm in a great mood, then usually that's going to show on the images that I capture, right? Uh, people are going to be smiling back to you, all that kind of good stuff. People are going to invite you in. Uh, you know, like I always say, like um, a camera is a passport into people's lives. So as long as you show up in, with a good mood, you'll be invited in. Um, Welcome, taking their pictures. People won't get mad at you. You know, you take a photo, you smile, cool. Uh, last thing I want is like some photographer walking around, looking all angry, taking pictures of me. So that's a little sus. Um, yeah, energy, energy, energy is everything. So right now I think we're gonna go to the market, get some food, because I may or may not have like a bonus tip. So we'll see. But I think we're gonna do one last quick little walk the market which is right over there and uh, see if I can get anything all right so let's do that right now Somehow, I think my lens is not wet. I think that might be a wrap for outside. Let's go inside now. So I don't melt. All right. <laughs> All right, so we just got to the food place. You got to be a little careful when you are photographing indigenous people. You kind of have to read the Bible a little bit. So I probably won't take any pictures in here. Um, might just get food. Right on.
Okay, here comes a cop. Let's see what happens. She's gonna get in trouble. Hello. Being aggressive. That went smooth. You wanna try it? Quanto cuesta un plato? It's three and four. Okay, three and four. Wanna try the other one? Okay, so this one's three and four dollars, which is kind of high for here. Hmm. Uh, pensa. <laughs> Can I see? My limited Spanish. So I think we're gonna eat at the one we ate at yesterday. Yeah. Is it dark though? Like how's the? Is it dark? Maybe go to F4. F4. <laughs> you can film the kids. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. I don't think nobody's working today. Here. Are they closed? Alright, so I guess we came at the wrong time or the right time. I don't know how to say it. But everything's closed. I think we're just gonna get a juice. Hola. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Tres dólares. Tres dólares. Igual. You want to get a juice? Yeah. Yes, yes. I wonder if it's cold. Gracias. Taste test. It's pretty good. Mmm. <laughs> it's muy rico. Gracias. <laughs> Bonus tip time. Pretty simple. I have a few things written here. Um, the first one is, first bonus tip that I have is to review your photos before going out to your next session. Uh, this is very, very important. You might be making mistakes and not realize it. And... <laughs> We have a visitor. I'm gonna talk through it. Hmm? He's talking about your videos. Ah, okay. You wanna ask him if he wants to be in the video? ¿Quieres salir? <laughs> ¿Y te haces no? famoso con él? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so review your photos. Um, yeah, you might be making mistakes and not realize it. So definitely, definitely important to get home, look at your photos, correct your mistakes. And if you have a GoPro, um, I don't know if you guys checked out my earlier videos, but I have done POV videos before. And when I do those POV videos, I actually learn a lot from them. I can see my mistakes, uh, things that I'm missing. So if you do have a GoPro, and if you don't post to YouTube, that's okay. But you can record yourself as well and watch the video over and you can see your mistakes. My last bonus tip is to leave your hometown. And um, I feel like this is important, especially it was for me, because although I love Nashville and I owe a lot of my learning and photography development to the city, I wasn't getting much inspiration from that place. So definitely, definitely, definitely had to leave. I made a decision to leave last year. Uh, if you don't know, I've been on the road for about eight months now, building my portfolio, capturing images. Yeah, leave your hometown. Uh, even if it's like to go to New York City, or somewhere for the weekend to take photos, somewhere that inspires you, I highly recommend that. And last thing I will add on to that is, if you can't leave your hometown, it's okay. You know, maybe work on seeing where you live differently with a, uh, with a fresh set of eyes. Perhaps looking for compositions that you normally don't see in your hometown. So I think that about wraps up this video. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you agree with the tips, if you have more tips, you can leave them in the comments below. And yeah, I think I'll do another video like this, maybe a part two, perhaps when it's uh, not raining outside. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. I will appreciate it a lot. Like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Petty life. I was not that late awake, I prick a better 